it's been a few years since I read the book, and I feel that it's about time to do another pass on it. I wanted to do it with you guys. So I'm going to cover one chapter every day. And if you guys like it, I'll continue with the Rustanomicon and some other advanced books. I really hope that you join me in this journey. I'm going to work hard to produce the best quality Rust content out there. So let's just get started here. Forward. It wasn't always so clear, but the Rust programming language is fundamentally about empowerment. No matter what kind of code you are writing now, Rust empowers you to reach further to program with confidence in a wider variety of domains than you did before. Take, for example, system-level work that deals with low-level details of memory management, data representation and concurrency. Traditionally, this realm of programming is seen as arcane, accessible only to a select few who have devoted the necessary years learning to avoid its infamous pitfalls. And even those who practice it do so with caution lest their code be open to exploits, crashes, or corruption. Rust breaks down these barriers by eliminating the old pitfalls and by providing a friendly, polished set of tools to help you along the way. Programmers who need to dip down into lower level control can do so with Rust, without taking on the customary risk of crashes or security holes, and without having to learn the fine points of a fickle toolchain. Better yet, the language is designed to guide you naturally towards reliable code that is efficient in terms of speed and memory usage. Programmers who are already working with low-level code can use Rust to raise their ambitions. For example, introducing parallelism in, our, in Rust is a relatively low-risk operation. The compiler will catch the classical mistakes for you. And you can tackle the more aggressive optimizations in your code with the confidence that you won't accidentally introduce crashes or vulnerabilities. But Rust isn't limited to low-level system programming. It's expressive and ergonomic enough to make CLI apps, web servers, and many other kinds of code quite pleasant to write. You'll find simple examples of both later in the book. Working with Rust allows you to build skills that transfer from one domain to another. You can learn Rust by writing a web app, then apply those same skills to target your Raspberry Pi. This book fully embraces the potential of Rust to empower its users. It's a friendly and approachable text intended to help you level up not just your knowledge of Rust, but also your reach and confidence as a programmer in general. So dive in, get ready to learn, and welcome to the Rust community. Niklas Matsakis and Aaron Turon. Introduction. Welcome to the Rust Programming Language, an introductory book about Rust. The Rust Programming Language helps you to write faster, more reliable software. High-level ergonomics and low-level control are often at odds in programming language design. Rust challenges that conflict. Through balancing powerful technical capacity and a great developer experience, Rust gives you the option to control low-level details, such as memory usage, without all the hassle traditionally associated with such control. Who is Rust for? Rust is ideal for many people for a variety of reasons. Let's look at a few of the most important groups. Teams of developers. Rust is proving to be a productive tool for collaborating among large teams of developers with varying levels of systems programming knowledge. Low-level code is prone to various subtle bugs, which in most other languages can be caught only through extensive testing and careful code review by experienced developers. In Rust, the compiler plays a gatekeeper role by refusing to compile with these elusive bugs, including concurrency bugs. By working alongside the compiler, the team can spend their time focusing on the program's logic rather than chasing down bugs. Rust also brings contemporary developer tools to the systems programming world. Cargo, the included dependency manager and build tool, makes adding, compiling, and managing dependencies painless and consistent across the Rust ecosystem. Rust format, formatting tool, ensures a consistent coding style across developers. The Rust analyzer powers integrated development environment, IDE integration for code completion and inline error messages. 
By using these and other tools in the Rust ecosystem, developers can be productive while writing system-level code. Students Rust is for students and those who are interested in learning about systems concepts. Using Rust, many people have learned about topics like operating systems development. The community is very welcoming and happy to answer student questions. Through efforts such as this book, the Rust teams want to make systems concepts more accessible to more people, especially those new to programming. Yeah, we want to save them from Python, I'm telling you. <laughs> companies. Hundreds of companies, large and small, use Rust in production for a variety of tasks, including command line tools, web services, DevOps tools, embedded devices, audio and video analysis and transcoding, cryptocurrencies, ugh, bioinformatics, search engines, Internet of Things applications, machine learning, and even major parts of the Firefox web browser. Open source developers. Rust is for people who want to build the Rust programming language, community, developer tools, and libraries. We'd love to have you contribute to the Rust language. People who value speed and stability. Rust is for people who crave speed and stability in a language. By speed, we mean both how quickly Rust code can run and the speed at which Rust lets you write programs. The Rust compiler's checks ensure stability through feature additions and refactoring. This is in contrast to the brittle legacy code in languages without these checks, which developers are often afraid to modify. <laughs> By striving for zero-cost abstractions, Higher level features that compile to lower level code as fast as code written manually. Rust endeavors to make safe code be fast code as well. The Rust language hopes to support many other users as well. Those mentioned here are merely some of the biggest stakeholders. Overall, Rust's greatest ambition is to eliminate the trade-offs that programmers have accepted for decades by providing safety and productivity, speed and ergonomics, Give Rust a try and see if its choices work for you. Give it a try. <laughs> Who this book is for? <laughs> this book assumes that you have written code in another programming language, but that doesn't make any assumptions about which one. We have tried to make the material broadly accessible to those from a wide variety of programming backgrounds. We don't spend a lot of time talking about what programming is or who to think about it. If you're entirely new to programming, you will be better served by reading a book that specifically provides an introduction to programming. How to use this book? In general, this book assumes that you're reading it in sequence from front to back. Later chapters build on concepts in earlier chapters, and earlier chapters might not delve into details on a particular topic, but will revisit the topic in a later chapter. You will find two kinds of chapters in this book, concept chapters and project chapters. In concept chapters, you'll learn about an aspect of Rust. In project chapters, we'll build small programs together, applying what you have learned so far. Chapters 2, 12 and 20 are project chapters. The rest are concept chapters. Chapter 1 explains how to install Rust, how to write a Hello World program, and how to use Cargo. Rust's package manager and build tool. Chapter two is a hands-on introduction to writing a program in Rust, having you build, build up a number guessing game. Here we cover concepts at a high level and later chapters will provide additional detail. If you want to get your hands dirty right away, chapter two is the place for that. Chapter three, cover Rust's features that are similar to those of other programming languages. And chapter four, you'll learn about Rust ownership system. That's a very important chapter, I will say. If you are particularly meticulous, if you are a particularly meticulous learner who prefers to learn every detail before moving on to the next, you might want to skip chapter two and go straight to chapter three, returning to chapter two when you'd like to work on a project applying the details that you have learned. I do not recommend that. <laughs> Just do two and then three and then come back if you have to. Chapter five discusses structs and methods. And chapter six covers enums, match expressions, and the if let control flow struct. What? Do you guys cover how you stole it from Swift? I'm just kidding. 
you'll use structs and enums to make custom types in Rust. In Chapter 7, you'll learn about Rust module system and about privacy rules for organizing your code and its public application programming interface, the API. Chapter 8 discusses some common collection data structures that the standard library provides, such as vectors, strings, and hash maps. Chapter 9 explores Rust error handling philosophy and techniques. Very, very important stuff. Chapter 10 digs into generics, traits, and lifetimes, which give you the power to define code that applies to multiple types. A chapter that Trumps understand very well is all about testing, which even with Rust's safety guarantees is necessary to ensure your program's logic is correct. In chapter 12, we'll build our own implementation of a subset of functionality from the rep command line tool that searches for text within files. For this, we'll use many of the concepts we discussed in the previous chapters. Chapter 13 explores closures and iterators, features of Rust that come from functional programming languages. In chapter 14, we'll examine cargo in more depth and talk about best practices for sharing your libraries with others. Chapter 15 discusses smart pointers that the standard library provides and the traits that enable their functionality. In chapter 16, we'll walk through different models of concurrent programming and talk about how Rust helps you to program in multiple threads fearlessly. Chapter 17 looks at how Rust idioms compare to object-oriented programming principles you might be familiar with. Chapter 18 is a reference on patterns and pattern matching which are powerful ways of expressing ideas throughout Rust programs. Chapter 19 contains a chapter 18 is a reference on patterns and pattern matching, which are powerful ways of expressing ideas throughout Rust programs. Chapter 19 contains a, a smorgasbord of advanced topics of interest, including unsafe Rust, macros, and more lifetimes, traits, types, functions, and closures. In chapter 20, we'll complete a project in which we'll implement a low-level multi-threaded web server. Finally, some appendices contain useful information about the language in a more reference-like format. Appendix A covers Rust keywords. Appendix B covers Rust operators and symbols. Appendix C covers der derivable traits provided by the standard library. Appendix D covers some useful development tools and Appendix E explains Rust editions. In Appendix F, you can find translations of the book, and in Appendix G, we'll cover how Rust is made and what nightly Rust is. There's no wrong way to read this book. If you want to skip ahead, go for it. You might have to jump back to earlier chapters if you experience any confusion, but do whatever works for you. An important part of the process of learning Rust is learning how to read the error messages the compiler displays. This will guide you toward working code. As such, we'll provide many examples that don't compile along with the error messages that the compiler in each situation. Know that if you enter and run a random example, it may not compile. Make sure you read the surrounding text to see whether the example you are trying to run is meant to error. Furries, so the little crap thing, will also help you to distinguish code that isn't meant to work. In most situations, we'll lead you to the correct version of any code that doesn't compile. Source code. These source files from which this book is generated can be found on GitHub, naturally. What do you think so far? I mean, right now we are going, to, <laughs> we have produced zero lines of Rust, but I feel that uh, it's important to sometimes take a step back and understand the, fi the philosophy and the background of the tools that you're trying to use. If this format works for you, please let me know in the comments, like and subscribe. That helps me to understand that this is, this is the path that we should go down moving forward.